In this video, I will go through the various tools found in the toolbar on the Johnson County online mapping application. This toolbar is located across the top of the map interface and contains a variety of several useful tools, including the zoom tool, the identify tool, measure, draw polygon, point or line, a buffer tool, the clear tool, Google Street View, as well as oblique imagery and, a and several other advanced tools. I'm going to go through the functionality of each tool individually. To begin, we'll start with the zoom tool. This tool allows you to draw a box on the map and zoom into a very specific location. So to do this, you'll select the tool, click and drag your mouse and draw a box on your map to the area that you want to zoom to. Do be aware that you do still have the option to zoom in using the scroll wheel on your mouse or the slider bar to the left. That's how your zoom tool works. The next tool is the identify tool, which could quite possibly be the most powerful tool within this interface. You actually have two options with the identify. You can identify on a property, which would be your parcel identify, or you can identify on all visible layers, which would be any layer that you have turned on and active over on the left hand side. I'm going to first do a parcel identify. So in this case, I'm going to select parcels. I've got the tool selected, and in this case, I can click within a property and it's going to identify on that property and return the identify results window. If you're familiar with the original IMS, this identify results window should be very familiar. It includes all, this, all the property specific information, such as situs address, links to your appraisal and tax bill, you've got location specific information, the schools that property would attend, the plat that that property resides in, an abbreviated legal description, the utilities servicing the property, as well as front elevation photos if they're available, which in this case they're not. Let me go ahead and pan my map just a little bit here and see if I can get a property that would have a front elevation. And again, if I just select the tool, I can actually hop around on my map and identify various properties here. So in this case, if I wanted to identify on this one, it's going to load the identify results for any property that I click on. So that's how that one works. To identify on the all visible layers, I'm actually going to have to turn on some layers over here on the left. So I'm going to turn on school districts, commissioner districts, and we'll do land use in this case. So you'll notice my map updates. Now if I come up here, make sure I've got all visible layers selected and the tool is active, Anywhere that I click within the map, it's actually going to return information about all of those layers that are active and give me the data behind those for wherever that point was clicked. So at this specific point, it'll show me the general land use, what school district that particular point resides in, as well as the commissioner district. So whatever map you have, whatever layer you have on over here, you'll re get that data returned over on the right in the identify results window. Now let me go ahead and show you one other thing that I forgot to mention. When this pulls up, you actually see there's a link here that says show and a link that says pan to. If I hit show, it's actually going to highlight. So in this case, I'm in a general land use there. The school district, if I show it, it's going to be a large school district. And if I pan to it, it's actually going to pan my map out to show me that entire school district area. So that's how those work. And you'll notice as I scroll over, I can show my commissioner district, and then I can pan to it. And it'll actually pan my map out to show me the entire commissioner district there. So that's how the identify tool works. Let me go ahead and use my zoom tool. I'm going to zoom back in here on an area where I've got some properties. There's a residential neighborhood. Turn off some of these layers. let my parcels draw. Now the measure tool is very similar to what we had in the original online mapping system. In the, with this tool you can actually measure anything on the map. So I'm going to select the tool, click on the map, and you'll notice I get a little red box and I have a dotted line. So as I click around the map, it's actually going to draw lines and you'll notice up here it's giving me an, a segment distance, my current active segment. So if I was out to here, you notice the active segment is 328.5 feet. 
gives me a bearing of the line that I'm currently drawing. It also gives me the measurement for my last segment and a total distance. So as I map around this property, go ahead and come back up here, and it closed it and gave me a last segment of 131.6 feet and a total of 414.2 feet. So if I was going to measure the perimeter, that's how that would work. This little box here is an er actually an eraser tool and it will clear anything that you've got drawn. So I'm going to go ahead and use that to clear my measure and move on to the next tool. The next tool is your draw polygon and if you click this down arrow you've actually got the option to do click a point on your map, draw a line, or draw a polygon. So I'm going to go ahead and select the polygon option and you'll notice as I click around the map again I get that red box and dotted line and this is going to allow me to draw any shape on my map that I want. Once I get to the point that I want to close the shape, that I'm done drawing it, I'll double click it. It's going to close that shape for me and actually give me the area and square feet and the acreage of that polygon that I just drew. So that's how that works. Go ahead and clear that one. If I want to draw a line, it works the exact same way. I just click and what this is going to do is allow me to draw a single line on the map. So if I needed to highlight something, that would work for that. And then the point tool, obviously, if you select that, just allows you to put a point on your map wherever you needed to put that. So that's how that tool works. The next tool here is your buffer tool. And this works by either drawing a point, line, or polygon, or by identifying on a property. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and just, since I have this tool active, I'll draw a polygon here real quick on my map. And let me go ahead and select my buffer tool. And what this does, it by default gives you a 200 foot buffer. You can actually change that default distance there of whatever you want. I'm going to go ahead and leave it at 200 feet. Select the parcels in the buffer. If I hit go here, it's actually going to draw that 200 foot buffer and then highlight all of the properties that fall within that buffer. If I go ahead and zoom out a little bit here, you can actually see all the parcels that it actually selected. Like I said, this works for drawing either a point polygon or line or by identifying on a property. So if I wanted to go back here and use my identify tool and select parcels, and then if I select a property, close this identify window and you'll notice that property is highlighted. Clear some of this out first actually. Identify on a property, don't need this identify window open. I can do my buffer, again of 200 feet, and I'll select the parcels. If I hit go, it's going to draw that 200 foot buffer, and again, select those parcels that fall within that buffer that are included in the buffer or affected by it. So that's how the buffer tool works. Again, this little eraser is your clear tool. The next tool here is for Google Street View. So if you're familiar with Google Street View, that's exactly what you're getting here. We're actually if you hit that button, it's going to draw these blue lines on the map. So if you've used Google Street View, it does that as well. And anywhere that you would click within this blue line will actually open up a window to Google Street View and show you what that looks like. We're actually taking it out to Google and showing you what the Street View looks like. And it is interactive. You can click and drag within there. And again, that works only where you see those blue lines. So you'll notice in certain places they haven't actually gone out and taken the street view photography. This next button here is oblique view and you do have to be zoomed in to a certain extent before that button will even be available to use. Now to use that, if you click on that one, it's actually going to open up Pictometry Online, which is the application that we use to put out our oblique imagery. And you do have to give it just a second to log in because it is based on a login, but it's actually going to go out to Pictometry Online, log you in as a public user, or if you are in a My Aims user and you're logged in, it will actually log you into your My Aims account. And at this case, at this point, once it logs in, you're actually going to be able to see the oblique imagery that we have for the specific area where you clicked. And oblique imagery is actually taken at 45 degree angles so that you can see all four sides. And you've got the ability here then to drag around on this map and look at that imagery. So that covers those basic tools there. The next few tools I want to cover are these ones over here on the right.
right hand side. You've got forward and back arrows. These work as your last extent and the next extent. This actual application does not really function very well with the back button on your browser, so you would need to use these forward and back buttons to view any previous extents that you've been at. So that's how those work. The save button will actually save your current extent, so if you wanted to revisit this area multiple times and you actually want that to be your default when you open up this application, you can say hit the save button and you'll get this little note saying this map extent will be displayed the next time you use this app. And if that's what you want to do, then go ahead and hit OK. Otherwise, it's going to keep you at that full county extent that you would normally see when you first come in. The print button. We have a couple ways that you can print from this application. If you click the print button, a window is going to pop up. Actually, let me go back here. This is going to give me a landscape view so you can actually see what that looks like. There's a drop down arrow right next to it that lets you choose if you want landscape or portrait. You just saw the landscape one, so if I click the portrait one, I'm going to get a window that we actually take you out to a separate window and you're going to get a security warning. At this warning, you actually do want to click no. So when I hit the no button, it's actually going to bring me up this 8.5 by 11 formatted print of what, everything that I've got on the screen. So you can even see I've got that point on there that's actually showing up. This map is interactive. You can click and drag the map around. There's some printing tips over here as far as you're, you're able to remove the legend. You can move it around. If it's got layers on it you don't want, you can actually click on them and get rid of them. There's a reset button there if you want to put it all back. So there are some, some print tips over here on the left. And from here you would just be able to go to File, Print, and send it to your printer. And again, you do have the option for Landscape or Portrait. The Send link here allows you to actually send your current extent from your email to another email. So you would enter in your email address here, whoever you want to send it to, you can type them a little message, and what this is actually going to do is send them a link that's going to actually open up their map to the exact extent that you had on your screen. The link button does very similar. It gives you actually a hyperlink that you can put in an email or a document of some sort or it gives you the actual HTML if you want to embed this particular map extent into a website. We're providing you with the HTML to do that. And then you've got your sign-in link here, so if you are a MyAIMS user, you can actually enter in your username and password here, sign in, and again this is actually going to refresh my map because I did sign in, but there is one more tool I wanted to point out, and that's this bookmark tool. And this is available only to My Aims users. So if you do have a login, you can actually, once you log in, you'll see that bookmark tool. And what it allows you to do is actually save map extents for quick return on future visits. So let me go ahead and zoom in here and pick a specific area. So say I visit this area all the time and I want to keep it as a bookmark. I can come up here, I can add new, and I can type in a name for it save it, and it's going to show up in my list of bookmarks the next time. And you can see I've got another one saved here, so if I were to click that one, it's actually going to zoom me to that. And you can actually use those just to quickly get to frequently visited areas. And again, that one is available only for my Ames users. That pretty much covers the bulk of these tools that you'd find here across the top of the application and should give you a good start on navigating through the interface. I would encourage you again to check out any of the other videos that you would find down here in the help section. There's an introductory one and there will also be one coming for the layers that, are, that you find here over on the left. So I encourage you to check those out for more information.